Welcome, everybody, back to Siegel Talks here at the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY in Midtown, uh, Manhattan. It's a slightly overcast day after some sunshine. It uh, got cold um, again. And, but also the world um, has gotten colder. It has gotten darker. And, um, and, uh, and in that old idea, on the old question, what bus tune, what shall we do? Um, as theater artists, also as intellectuals uh, in the world we live in, um, um, we are having this conversation today on HowlRound um, with uh, one of the, the leading, I think, theater artists in the world, in the global world, on the planetary sense. We have the Belarus uh, Free Theater with us today. So thank you both for coming, Sletlana, Sadana, uh, Sugako, and of course, Nikolai Kalizin. Both of you, welcome to Siegel Talk. Thank you. Where are you now and Thank what you. time is it? Uh, I'm now in Warsaw and it's uh, 5 p.m. 5 p.m., yeah. And Nikolai? Uh, Nikolai I'm, yes, I'm in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, at me, 11, uh, 12. 12. 12 gnomes. So you are in, in Washington, not in your kind of home where you have been forced into exile into London. Let me tell you all a little bit um, about, uh, about them. Um, Svetlana uh, studied graphic design, music, choreography at the Belarusian National University, and she was involved with the um, BFT, the Belarus Free Theater in Minsk, a theater, I might add, which is, at least in our theaters, a legendary, uh, important, admired, and, uh, and also on everybody's mind when it comes to free expression, human rights, and the work, what theater can do and should be uh, uh, doing. She has been running the operation of uh, the Belarus Free Theater um, since uh, 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 it was forced into exile uh, in 2011. And she formerly is the production manager and uh, also created a campaign of uh, BFT on LGBTQI rights. It's a very important uh, work. We think at the Siegel organizing, uh, activism, political engagement, and artwork and theater work is connected. It can and should not be um, uh, looked at as different work. So it is really fantastic uh, what you're doing. She's featured also in the book, uh, Two Women in Their Time by photographer Misha Friedman and New York staff writer Marsha Gessen, portraying her and Nadia. Uh, Brodskaya as the power couple that is spearheading um, the, the operation and the work of that company uh, that has done over 50 productions, um, um, if I'm right, and shown it in over 40 countries around the world. Um, and this is quite remarkable since uh, 2005. Awards for them include the Human Rights Prize of the French Republic, the Atlantic Council Award, Václav Havel Prize. Um, we have good friends with the Václav Havel here, Center here in New York. The Magnitsky Prize for Courage Under Fire, the Stage International Awards, and I'm sure many, um, many more. Nikolai uh, Kalizin is the co-founding artistic uh, director um, of the Belarus Free Theater, and uh, they have won many, many awards. He's a playwright, designer, educator, political campaigner, and a journalist. And if I understand right, uh, he worked as a journalist, a very important paper in Belarus that got shut down. Two other papers he worked were shut down. And then he said, I want to continue to write. Why don't I write for theater? And one of the quotes I read was, he said, you know, an article, news article has a life of a week or two, if you're lucky. You write something for this theater, it stays. There's something uh, different. He also owned a contemporary art gallery um, in Minsk, maybe the only one, and was part of uh, major exhibitions uh, around the world. So this idea would art, visual art, contemporary art, theater that we have to redo it. They also connect. He connects it with journalism in a way like Rimini Protocol that often says we are, you know, citizens, citizen journalists. We are architects, urban planners, and we also do. Um, theater um, and uh, performances. Um, he served time uh, in prison for his involvement in political campaigns and was recognized as a prisoner of consciousness by Amnesty International. Um, the most celebrated, most well-known show of BFT, most of you know it, <clears throat> Generation Genes was created uh, by him and with uh, DJs and others has been shown a hundred, more than a hundred times uh, around the world. And um, 
the Freedom Theater of Belarus was uh, forced to leave with the entire company, if I understand right, all 20 members. Last December, they fled in the middle of the night in New Year's Eve, hiding under blankets, under false names. Their life was uh, in danger um, um, and uh, friends have been killed and went to prison. And But uh, Nikolai is already, I think, uh, since 2011, I think, in, uh, in, in London. So please excuse my very long uh, um, introduction. This is a place for listening. We feel like radical listening. So uh, even so, I, it doesn't sound like in the beginning, now we, we come over to it. And I would like to start uh, perhaps uh, with you, um, Slutlana. Um, what is going through your mind at the moment? Uh, so my, of everything, uh, well, uh, we just finished our Docs of Europe in London, and uh, uh, which was very uh, just fantastically, I think. So we did it in Barbican, uh, the biggest uh, uh, stage in London. And uh, now I am in Warsaw, uh, grabbing some of uh, props and moving back to London to play our different show. Uh, uh, Daniela maybe can help me with translation. What is the name in English? Uh, uh, so the title of the show is uh, How Man Had a Speaking Sparrow. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we and uh, what else we will do in uh, a few uh, next weeks? Uh, create a new show working on a new show. Uh, uh, yeah, and thinking how can we, where shall we based and how all this now can work with us uh, because we uh, unfortunately couldn't go back to Belarus and now we couldn't stay in Warsaw because of the uh, refugee crisis, crisis here. So it's a big question now, but a lot of work, and that's everything in my mind right now. Yeah, it is quite, quite something. We hear a little bit of a feedback or a radio or television program. Um, I don't know, uh, Daniela, maybe it's on your part. Um, uh, Nikolai, um, thank you for, for joining. Nikolai, you are a theater artist, you're a journalist, you're a writer. Николай, спасибо, что присоединился. Ты писатель, ты журналист, ты создатель. Что ты сейчас думаешь о, о мире, что происходит и что происходит у тебя? О мире я думаю, что мы, те, кто понимал, что будет происходить, мы не достучались до мира. Мы все. Мы все не смогли объяснить, что произойдет. Мы, мы пытались, но наших сил оказалось мало, и теперь это происходит. All of us, the thinking people, the people who understood what will happen, we try to scream and shout and let the world know of the dangers awaiting, but unfortunately we ultimately failed in our mission. Я думаю, что мы должны как-то коллективно разделить эту вину, потому что сейчас разговор идет не о том, что виноват Путин, а о том, что виноваты мы, что мы не остановили этого Путина. But I think at this point we should all share the collective blame because uh, you can't just say that it's all Putin's fault, it is also our fault for letting Putin exist and letting Putin do what he is doing. С другой стороны, сейчас время, когда для творцов, для тех, кто занимается искусством, почвы для рефлексии, для обдумывания, для, для новых произведений огромное количество. Sad that is. Um, the, the soil for creators, for artists, uh, for reflection, for writing new pieces is extremely fertile. Но я очень боюсь, что мир этим снова не воспользуется. But I'm very much afraid that the world will once again not use this in the right way. Я был обескуражен, когда закончились локдауны, когда театры в Британии начали работать, и я не увидел в афишах ни одной новой работы, которая бы рефлексировала об этих годах, которая могла бы 
хотя бы поставить вопросы об этом. Мы вернулись опять к веселым мюзиклам. I was shocked when, after years of lockdown, when the theatres once again opened in the UK, we all of a sudden saw the same shows that were there before. There was not a single new show that reflected on the years that we've spent more or less inside. We all of a sudden just returned to the same jolly musicals that we are so used to seeing in the West End. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, this is also true uh, for New York, where you have been at the great uh, public theater and where you will go uh, back. By the way, I think when you were uh, forced out of uh, uh, your home in Belarus, it was perhaps noticed even more than the uh, uh, occupation, you know, and uh, illegal um, uh, 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 declaration of war of Russia to Belarus. People came out for you and they were here. Um, so you are um, in the minds um, of everybody. You have been interrogated, both of you have been in prison, friends of you have been killed and been posted as suicides. Um, you uh, have experienced uh, what free speech means, what a free artistic expression really means. All, if I understand, all theaters in Belarus are state owned. All directors, creative directors are appointed by the Ministry of Culture. Everything is censored. Uh, we can imagine what you see there. And I saw your theater, that beautiful, small, kind of old-fashioned home in the middle of your concrete uh, uh, buildings. Um, uh, you say your work is not political. Performances are not political. There's no politics in play. Explain us a little bit what, what that means. Maybe, uh, Nikolai. Svetlana or Nikolai? Nikolai, perfect. Um, Николай, значит, как, когда все это начало происходить, из-за того, что как много вас люди знают в Нью-Йорке, как вы раньше выступали в паблике и вернетесь опять, люди всегда для, за вас выходили и будут выходить, и у вас у самих есть опыт того, сколько стоит свобода выражения, вы оба были в тюрьме, ваших друзей убивали, сделали вид, что это суициды, и я видел ваше великолепное маленькое здание в Минске посреди всех этих бетонных зданий, где существовал ваш театр, который, в отличие от всех остальных театров, не был назначен Министерством культуры режиссера, он не являлся легальным. Ты можешь чуть-чуть поговорить о вот этом, о суще... таком существовании и о том, насколько это о твоем опыте в этом всем? Ну, я начну с парадокса, с того, что мы не испытывали дискомфорта, работая в маленьком неприспособленном помещении. I'll start with perhaps of a paradox. When we worked in that tiny building uh, that you've mentioned, we surprisingly didn't feel any... Потому что мы, в отличие от государственных театров, могли заниматься тем, чем мы хотим, и определять самим uh, тот репертуар, который создавали. Because unlike the state theaters, we were able to decide what we want to talk about ourselves, and we talked about the topics that mattered to us, for us, essentially. И это дает очень много сил. And uh, this gives a lot of strength. И когда тебя еще приглашают по всему миру выступать на самых престижных площадках, ты понимаешь, что uh, ты делаешь все правильно. Пусть ты и не так признан uh, в, ну, в себя на родине. And while you may not be at all recognized in your own home country, it's very endearing when a lot of great stages and companies and festivals all around the world invite you to perform the work that you've been creating essentially for yourself. In the country that doesn't allow it. Ну, мы, <coughs> мы всегда знали главное, что мы должны говорить то, о чё, что волнует нас. И тогда зритель, который, неважно в какой стране мира, он будет точно так же э, с нами вместе э, думать о том, что его волнует. Uh, I always understood that we need to talk about exactly what bothers us because then the audience, regardless of where the show is being performed, will simultaneously think about what bothers them. Uh, it's a very difficult path because uh, you, uh, 
как правило, те фонды, те трасты, те организации, которые хотят финансировать, они хотят финансировать все-таки больше uh, совершенно безопасное искусство. It's a very complicated path to be on because in majority of the time all the foundations, the trusts that give money for the work, they want to finance very safe productions. И тебе говорят в открытую, что вы занимаетесь политикой, поэтому нет. And you are actually being told quite openly that I'm sorry, but you do politics, so it's a no from us. И вот мы приходим к моменту, когда политика теперь везде. Просто везде. But now we've come to this moment in time when politics is absolutely everywhere. Я вообще не знаю, что сейчас не политика в современном мире. In this contemporary world, I cannot tell you what is not politics anymore. Потому что война всегда стирает все границы, и она заставляет нас располагаться либо по одну сторону окопов, либо по другую. Because the war makes us position ourselves on one side of the barricades, one way or another, making us and forcing us to choose. Это интересное, творчески интересное время, но оно и... A very artistically interesting time. Но оно и безумно опасно для всех. But it is just as dangerous for literally everyone. И становится уже безразлично, ты работаешь в большом красивом здании или в небольшом гараже. And now it doesn't matter whether or not you work in a grand building or a tiny garage. Потому что э, твой голос, если ты говоришь о важном, он сразу же усиливается очень сильно, сто крат. Because if you're talking about something important, your voice is straight away magnified. Up to hundredfold. Мы сейчас выпустили премьеру спектакля «Собаки Европы», и мы наблюдали, как, как, как был сразу же sold out на все спектакли. When we released Dogs of Europe in London, we first noticed that it was fully sold out. И как э, все критики поставили одинаковые оценки, да, четыре звезды. And how all the reviewers gave exactly the same rating of four stars. Потому что я понимаю, почему. Потому что, And uh, I completely ну, understand why. Financial Times все-таки поставила пять звезд. Only Financial Times gave five stars, but apart from that, everyone uh, else gave four. А я понял, что четыре, потому что пока непонятно, как, как выражать, через какую систему критериев оценок Uh, нужно выражать свое мнение. And I understood why four. Four, because it's not yet understandable how and through which criteria do you show your personal opinion on the greater subject. И мне это было безумно интересно на самом деле, потому что, потому что это такая точка зависания. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, an incredible time, um, a time of transition and change, uh, existential threat of, of dying, of the time of Thanatos, you know, uh, uh, what we are experiencing. Um, Svetlana, you have to reorganize an entire country, an entire company, 20 people left um, to continue to create. Um, what does it mean for you to... to, to create the space for art, for theater. Why do you do it? Um, why is theater work um, a reaction instead of, uh, you know, saying I'm doing journalism, I join the army, I become a nurse. What is what is your motivation? What, what motivates you? What do you believe well, in? Well, yeah, I'm uh, kind of working with this company for 17 years, but it's not work because it's the whole my life and the people who are in the theater. Uh, we're just a family. We do a lot together. We create together. We smile together, laughing, uh, crying together. We go through very difficult situations a lot of time. So it's our family. It's our. Um, it's not kind of just work where you came and do something and then you have a different life. No, it's not how it works for me. So, of course, it was absolutely important to be together and continue to work. And it uh, doesn't matter 
Well, we all the time we talk that uh, Belarus Free Theater is more than theater because we do not only theater, we do uh, a lot of campaigns and activities. And, uh, and yeah, Belarus Free Theater, it's not a space, not a venue, not a like building, you know, it's uh, people who do it. And no matter where we are, as soon as we together, and we uh, have, uh, well, we alive. So let's uh, continue to be alive and moving forward and try to change uh, somehow situation, even if it's hard. But uh, well, uh, we, doesn't matter. Well, you still have to continue to do what you want to do, you know. And that's of course. Uh, so it was not uh, a choice. We we move everyone. Will we continue to work or no? It, it was not kind of choice because, of course, we, if we have a chance to continue to do, we will do it no matter where. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It was not easy, but we, we did it. Uh, everyone in safe now, uh, not in Belarus, not in Ukraine, because uh, part of us uh, was. Uh, uh, going th- from Belarus to Ukraine to Kiev with families and then because of war uh, the families have to run away and but now finally everyone in safe yeah and I would just for all our listeners to remind you those moments um, in life which you both went through um, where you have to make up your mind in a very short time um, what is the future going to be? Do I say goodbye to my country? I pack a backpack, um, say goodbye to my parents, and uh, but I work for my company. We do the theater. We uh, committed to keep, in a way, Belarus's critical spirit alive. And you made such a great contribution towards that wave of protest that went around the world. Um, um, this is uh, what theater people do. It's our community. I'm proud to be a part of it in some way. And we really look up to, to both of you in uh, uh, in your work and what you did. Tell us a bit, I also read you built a wooden raft and sailed down one of the rivers of Belarus to talk to people in small villages where there are no internet, so nothing. Um, wh- when did you do that? Uh, it was uh, to, uh, to, well, just uh, what was the year of elections, 2020? Uh, yeah, and uh, until some of us was sitting in a jail, some of us was creating new show on this raft. Raft. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, it was just after our release. Uh, it was premiere on on the, this show, release from the jail. So how did that uh, go? How was the experience? Did people listen? Well. To- yeah, it's uh, you know people who uh, don't have chance, don't have even money to go to city for to theater. They don't have uh, time because they work a lot just to survive. And then uh, theater came to them. Like if you have no choice to go to theater, so theater will go to you. You know, and of course they was very glad to see it, and they was asking. Uh, when the next time you will come, like uh, when there is an ch- opportunity again to see you and to talk with uh, uh, somebody not from our village and not and talk about some something important, what we actually don't talk about here. Uh, so yeah, it was very important work, and mm-hmm. I wish I wish we will continue, and I have no doubt as soon we will have chance to go back home. Definitely, uh, that's what we will do. Yeah, I think you, as you all pointed out, the time of Lukashenko will come to an end. It's just a question when and how many people will die. And Nikolai, um, the show Docs of Europe is about a man traveling through a future Europe uh, uh, or Russia, where, where almost all memories of Belarus have uh, disappeared. Tell us a bit about the work. Why do you felt feel that this was um, 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 a novel you wanted to base your work on? Николай работа собаки Европы, но про человека, который как бы в разном временном 
пространстве, и оно существует э, в пространстве, где про Беларусь, как Беларусь, уже ничего не помнят и не знают. Ты можешь рассказать, почему ты выбрал именно эту работу, и почему ты хотел, чтобы ее увидели, и в целом, почему собаки в рот? Наверное, впервые в истории, может быть, даже театра, мы получили права на э, инсценировку этого романа, еще не прочтя ни одной его строки. Он находился еще в э, редактуре. We actually got the rights to stage the novel before it was published and before the work was completed and before we've actually even read it. Um, и мы были уверены, что это будет выдающийся роман. Uh, так оно и получилось. На мой взгляд, это лучший роман за последние 30 лет, созданный в Беларуси. And we, we thought it will work out, we hope it will work out, and I believe it did. When I read the piece, I realized it's probably one of the best pieces of literature written in Belarus in the last 30 years. Uh, это uh, дистопия. Это дистопия, которая, которая реализуется прямо сейчас. Uh, it's a dystopia, and a dystopia that is being realized as we speak. Самое, самое страшное, что происходит, это то, что uh, Альгерт написал этот роман в семнадцатом году, и сейчас 22 второй, и вот эти пять лет uh, мы идем прямо по роману. То есть все происходит так, как описано в романе. Это на самом деле страшно, потому что если это придет к тому же, к чему пришло в романе, uh, это, мы, мы, наша нормальная жизнь в привычном виде закончится. Uh, it's very scary because Algert, the, the author of the novel, he wrote it back in 2018-2019. And the years since the, the production of this piece, we've been following the exact narrative that he has laid out. And it's really scary if we will continue the trend that is currently ongoing. There is no way of saying that this wouldn't be true. Это роман предостережения. Но э, пока сейчас он выглядит как будто это документальный роман. It's a warning novel, but at the moment, the way things are looking, it feels very documentary. Mm -hmm. Where does the novel go? Tell us a bit. What are you afraid of that might happen? Where does the novel go? Your play. Uh, чего ты боишься? Куда, куда ведет эта новелла? Uh... Она ведет к, к поляризации мира и на месте... России, части Азии, части Европы, в том числе и Беларусь, на, на, на этой территории возникает новый рейх. А Европа перестает читать книги и э, постепенно деградирует. So the, the plot, as some of you might be aware or not, um, no, no. It's, mm -hmm. it's how uh, Russia creates a new Reich overtaking parts of Ukraine, Belarus, Mongolia, China. So it's kind of, it goes eastwards and southwards mostly, creating a very bipolar world in which there is a huge degradation of the West, in fact, because first the European Union dissolves and then the League of Nations as, as an entity is degraded part of the world that is no longer interested in literature, which poses us all with the risk of what, what will happen to us all when there is authoritarianism and indifference. Yeah, it is quite, quite dystopian in the sense um, of the word. Um, Nikolai, um, so your work is in that sense political uh, and, and not. It is cerebral, uh, intellectual, and it is not, you know, because also the body, the work of the body of the actor is in the center also of your company, you know, it's less projection and more movement. Tell us a bit about the philosophy. What is the, what is the Belarus free theater's idea of, uh, of theater? Расскажи чуть-чуть о философии театра. Какова э, философия именно белорусского свободного театра? Белорусский свободный театр, если брать его некое э, содержательное ядро, основывается на 
футбольном принципе. If we kind of take it to the core of what the theater is, um, it's based on actually a football principle. American football? Uh, you mean soccer? No, soccer. Soccer, soccer. 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 Okay. Да, And this part of the world is still football. Yeah, 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 of course. В 70-х годах э, была сборная Голландии по футболу, которую руководил Ринус Михелс. Uh, the, the uh, right. э, и они разработали идею, которая называлась тотально, идея тотального футбола. And they developed an idea which they titled the idea of total football. Мы взяли это, эти принципы и на базе их создали uh, принцип нашего театра, который основывается на, на идее тота, тотального погружения. And we took those principles and we redeveloped them to work with our theater and now it's based on the idea of total immersion. В, у, у тотального футбола было три основных принципа. Это the первый, total football had three main principles. Первый – это uh, ансамблевая игра, игра в пас. The first one was ensemble uh, game and playing in pass. Uh, второй принцип – быстрый переход от обороны к атаке. The second principle – quick transition from defense to offense. И третий принцип – это прессинг по всему полю. And the third principle is uh, force spread throughout the field. Uh, We also added the sincerity and actuality. And now we have the principle upon which Belarus Free Theatre was based. No. Uh, была сложность в том, что мы не могли в государственной системе образования найти актеров, которые бы соответствовали этим принципам. But the problem was that uh, we couldn't find in the government system any actors that would coexist with that principle. И мы создали свою театральную школу, чтобы готовить специалистов для нашего театра. So we created our own theater school. Um, that would prepare things, the actors for our theatre. Она называется Fortin Brass. And it's called Fortin Brass. И мы уже 12-13 лет мы готовим там актеров для своего театра. And for the last 12 years, um, we've been working to prepare actors. Uh, это принцип тоже подготовки, который базируется на наших техниках, uh, в том числе на работе, этюдной работе, на uh, физическом театре, на uh, театре иммерсивном. Uh, so it's based on different types of work, the etude work, the immersion theater. Mm, yeah, uh, it's... Go ahead. Uh, Физический театр еще очень, очень, очень физический театр и театр, который основывается на впечатлениях актера. Uh, the principles of the physical theater is also very important to us, and the theater that is based on how the actors perceive the work personally as human beings. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. I think it was Pasolini who said that artists have to throw their bodies into life um, and connect to it and, uh, and be there. Um, also, um, uh, 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 Svetlana, you were a co-founder of Fortin Brass. Um, the educational side of it, I understand an actress from Belarus who once was in your company will never be employed again at a state theater, is that correct? Correct, yes. So I just want to let everybody know, you know, there are distinctions between off and off of Broadway and Broadway in New York, but this is much more serious, much more radical. So once you even participated in a workshop or um, that was it, you will never ever for your life 
work and what you trained for, perhaps at the state uh, academies. So you created a new school. Um, as Milo Rao often says, we have to create new institutions of learning, of transferring knowledge. How much of the work of Belarus Free Theater is work for stage, for performance? How much is activism, taking action, education like the school, How percentage-wise? Well, we definitely uh, do more stage uh, work. Uh, we did a lot of activism before 2020 when it was uh, when it was possible to do any kind of activism. And then uh, uh, because of pressure uh, and everyone, all of uh, the uh, civil society is gross, you know, uh, during uh, president, last president, uh, uh, president elections. So people start to do activism without us. Like a lot of people was doing a uh, different uh, type of uh, uh, actions on streets. But uh, government, uh, police, KGB was very uh, uh, aggressive. And of course, uh, a lot of people was ready to sit in jail, but not a lot of people was ready to die there. And uh, yeah, the situation was very horrible. Uh, yeah, and that's the point where people start to left country. Like it just was uh, uh, scared, like um, scared to 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 die there. Even there is no war you kind of in the center of Europe, uh, you do nothing wrong, you do not uh, any kind of criminal on streets, but there is chance for you to die. So completely not safe. Uh, yeah, in terms of theater, uh, all of uh, our work, all of our show have uh, uh, some kind of in, in uh, some kind of actions, campaigns, uh, come, um, uh, compare. Uh, correlated. Correlated. Thank you. With with performances. So uh, yeah, we did our best to be active and to be visible and to to do uh, to put uh, uh, questions on top in uh, society. Uh, yeah. yeah, and. No, it it, it is incredible what you did. Um, uh, you're an example of what theater can do. You are signaling through the flames and um, and the idea that you can discuss something, you know, on a stage, different opinions, a dialogue, which is not allowed. I know you did a play against a death penalty. Um, is I think uh, uh, Belarus is the only uh, European country where Western kind of, or whatever, Middle European where death penalty exists. I think bodies are not even given back in Belarus after executions. And you just, even though discussing it um, is a radical act of resistance and shows um, what the can. And is it true? I understand even performing, speaking in Belarusian language can put you in jail. Yeah. T tell us about that. About what? Uh, the language, being, even spe performing being, in, or speaking in Belarusian language. Yeah, being in jail just bef because you speak your uh, national language. It, it, uh, I, I couldn't believe it when I read that. Yes. <laughs> well, you have to believe it is what it is. Yeah. Even when you have a national flag uh, uh, on your, I don't know, somewhere on your T-shirts or somewhere, or even some stick uh, with national flag in on your car, you can be uh, arrested because of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or if you talk Belarusian, that definitely you kind of person who are um, not uh, uh, government couldn't trust you. You know. Yeah, it is uh, incredible to even think that the government of Belarus will not trust you if you speak the language of your very own. A, a country. Um, it, it's uh, 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 hard to, to, to put your mind around it. Nikolai, you said it earlier, you said you go to London and you see old plays, plays that have been in production, nothing has changed. What goes through your mind uh, about the idea of free expression 
free speech and how Western states, but also artists, how they are working, how they are using it. What, what do you think about it? Николай, вот ты сказал в самом начале про то, что после локдауна ты ходишь и видишь те же самые мюзиклы, те же самые пьесы. Что происходит у тебя в голове? Что ты думаешь о свободе экспрессии? То, как западные художники, возможно, ее не используют. И, и что происходит в западном мире со свободой экспрессии? Происходят собаки Европы. So, The sad thing is that what is happening is dogs of Europe. Художники, даже те, которые хотят высказываться на на острые темы, на темы, которые беспокоят всех, они не получают достаточного ответа от там, тех, кто распределяет деньги, да, потому что это не очень поддерживается. The artists who even want to talk about the topics that matter, the poignant topics, they do not get enough response from the people who allocate the funding. Their ideas are not supported. И создается впечатление, что художники только и хотят говорить о My Fire Lady или о Book of Mormons. And it creates an impression that in reality all artists really want to talk about is My Fair Lady or Book of Mormons. Yeah, Book of Mormons. Openly racist show in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, it's a story, because a lot of people about it think about the reality and try to talk about it. But I really do think it's a lie because I do believe that a lot of artists do consider what really is going on in real life and they do want to talk about it. Но зачастую институции их маргинализируют. But very often the institutions marginalize them. При этом мы говорили сейчас о собаках Европы, мы говорили ведь о теме очень политической, об очень социальной, и билеты были раскуплены все, значит, люди хотят все-таки говорить об этом. But if you look at the people, for example, in Dogs of Europe, we talked about... So we just lost Daniela. ...to what is going on in the world now, and mm. it was a complete sold out which means people do want to talk about it. They do want to think about it. The audience needs that. Мне просто кажется, что сами институции должны сейчас повернуться к, к реальности. Они должны провоцировать высказывание авторов на эти темы. Только тогда мы сможем, дискутируя и осознавая э, предыдущие проблемы, мы сможем поискать пути выхода. I really do think that at the moment it is up to institutions to provide the artists and provoke the artists to allow them uh, to express their real thoughts and feelings. And then through a discussion, we can finally come to a world where the things we see on stage are relevant. So you feel leadership of institutions have to face and realize that uh, that planetary that crisis we are in and ask for a response Вы считаете, что руководство институции должно поменять свою свою как бы свою архаичность и они должны понять, что нам нужно дискутировать, чтобы получить правильный ответ. Нам да, да, они должны повернуться лицом к проблеме. Yes, they need to face the problem. Но не, не задача э, искусства искать э, ответы. But it's not um, the art's goal to look for answers. Наша задача ставить вопросы. Our goal is to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Question for both of you. What would you like to see or what should artists do? What do you feel strongly about? What kind of methods, work, play, should we see? Maybe, uh, uh, let's start with Svetlana. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, want to do and I want to see doing. Like, I want to see uh, 
uh, artist continue to do even if it's hard and even if uh, it seems that nothing is matter like nothing no none of your movements none of your art now can change situation but it doesn't mean uh, it is how it looks like it doesn't mean you 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 have to do nothing that's uh, because uh, a lot of my friends artists now belarusians and polish and ukrainians they stuck in you know they stuck in and kind of what the reason we will do something uh, no songs no theater uh, performances no uh, uh, art at all because nothing matter nothing have nothing could change situation but you have to continue to do like express and show and shout and uh, you have to do it you are artist and that's your how natalia karida uh, uh, every time she repeat like this is only one our weapon the art everything what we have so we have to use it Николай. Николай. Я, я хочу, чтобы люди искусства говорили обо мне. I want people of art to be talking about me. Я не Гамлет. I'm я not Hamlet. Не, я не Хэмилтон. I'm not Hamilton. Я Николай Халезин, который живет, который живет в изгнании, который живет, который белорус, и страна которого втянута в войну. I'm uh, Nikolai Kalizin. I'm a Belarusian. I'm an emigre. My country is involved in a war. Я европеец. I'm a European. Uh, мои друзья гибнут сейчас. My friends are currently dying. И я хочу, чтобы мне рассказали обо мне. And I want to hear a story about me, not me as in me, but me as in every single one of us. И uh, если говорить о том, что я хочу сделать, я хочу, And например, we talk сейчас... about what I want to do. Я хочу, например, сейчас поставить оперу. У нас есть белорусская опера, которая называется «Дикая охота короля Стах». If you ask me what I want to do, I want to stage an opera. We have a Belarusian opera called The Wild Hunt of the King Stach. О богатых людях, которые переодевались и под видом призраков творили бесчинство. About a group of wealthy people who dressed up and pretended to be ghosts uh, and as this Не слышно. Um, yeah, looks like we, we lost uh, Daniela. Uh, Svetlana, I'm here. I'm here again. Oh, here. So go back to a group of people who pretended so to be ghosts. A group of wealthy people who pretended to be ghosts and went on this wild hunt and went around marauding while in a disguise of ghosts. Но я хочу сделать это с актерами Белорусского свободного театра и с оперными исполнителями, которые лишились работы, которые представляют разбомблю. I want to do this with the opera singers who lost uh, their job, whether it's because they were fired in Belarus or their theaters were bombed out in Ukraine. Uh, с, с певцами Харьковского театра, вот, ну, допустим, которые разбомб... the singers of the Kharkiv Opera Theater. Uh, с исполнителями из белорусского оперного театра, которые были уволены по политическим мотивам и уехали из страны. The singers from the Belarusian Opera Theater who were fired for political motives and also forced to leave. С актерами свободного театра, которые оказались теперь без дома и без родины. With the actors of the Belarus Free Theater who were also forced to leave and now are literally homeless. И вовлечь какой-то из театров, которые в состоянии сейчас работать европейский театр. And involve a big European theatre that is capable of putting on a show like this. Мне кажется, такие вещи должны сейчас работать, чтобы мы все понимали, насколько мы все рядом, насколько мы страдать мы будем все вместе. 
I think it's this sort of work that has to be done now because we as artists and as people need to understand how close we all are to each other and how we will eventually all suffer together. Have you is that have you have an offer for that? Has people have some people offered you space for that offer opera? Ты уже общался с кем-то на эту тему? Тебе уже предлагали место для этой оперы? Нет, это это идея, к которой мы пришли только вот только сейчас и долго обсуждали и поняли, что это то, что может быть вот очень знаковым, сильным и и очень объединяющим. Uh, we actually just came up with that idea very recently since the mm -hmm. events in Ukraine started unfolding to find a, a piece of work that can be very monumental for both of our countries and something that can really reiterate what we've yeah. been trying to say for a while. But we are willing to talk to anyone who wants to listen. <laughs> Yeah, so this is anyone who is listening to us now and in theater, in operas, who's wondering what can we do when we could do our part to invite uh, uh, the Belarus Freedom Theater who act for freedom. They're doing acting for freedom is their, their motto, you know, and produce that opera with people who lost their job because perhaps of an interview, because of something they said or because they participated once in a workshop with the Belarus a free theater. It's it's just shocking um, the moment where we are and artists uh, like Nikolai, uh, like Natalia, uh, like Svetlana, they really need, if they ever needed our help, it was already horrible and catastrophic enough before. It is now. So um, this is a way of, uh, you know, help to express and mankind's uh, contribution, you know, to the civilized world. It is art, as someone said, uh, the opposition of war is not a uh, uh, freedom, it's creativity, a discourse, you know, uh, a, uh, uh, antagonistic exchange of ideas of in a civil area, on a stage, in a soccer field of, of theater, as Nicola said. A, a, a question for Svetlana. Um, we also wanted to have uh, Natalia Kaliada with us. Um, Natalia is in Washington uh, together now with uh, Nikolai, and um, she is talking to policymakers, if I write. So tell us a little bit about that part of your company, of your work. What is she doing? What is she talking about? What what what, what is that all about? I think uh, uh, Nikolai actually will answer better than me on this question because they are together doing one thing. Okay. Nikolai, so, yeah. can you tell us about what Natalia is doing in New York? Мы, у нас есть свой как бы бэкграунд политический и социальный, поэтому мы занимаемся, выделяем время на то, чтобы заниматься общественной деятельностью. So we separately from the theater um, have a very political background and we do a lot of political uh, high level advocacy. So we dedicate a good proportion of our time to that. За последние дни встречались с Конгресс, представителями Конгресса, Сената, Белого дома. Сейчас вот я здесь у вас с вами на интервью. Наталья поехала в Пентагон. So in the last week we saw representatives of, of the Congress, Senate, the White House, Foreign Ministry, Ministry of Defense. So at the moment, as I'm speaking to you, Natalia is actually uh, talking to people from Pentagon. Uh, это наша миссия, которая у нас есть, которая нам, которую, который зовет, призывает нас наша страна, и мы должны, если наши голоса слышат как творческие голоса, то мы должны это использовать и в том числе для помощи своей стране и Украине. So if people know us, if people are ready to listen to us, we ought to use our names and this power we have to help both Ukraine and our country. Есть такое латинское выражение, которое любят использовать. Оно звучит как, когда говорят пушки, музы молчат. There is this really old, Nikolai thinks possibly Latin saying that roughly translates to something like uh, when the guns are singing. Подожди еще расскажи. 
Nous aimons ça. Nous aimons ça. Nous aimons ça. Nous aimons Но на самом деле в оригинале это высказывание звучало так, когда говорят кушки, законы молчат. But actually what few people know is that in the original it sounded more close to when the guns are singing, the laws are silent. И вот мы те музы, которые хотим не молчать, когда говорят пушки, мы не имеем просто права молчать. Мои друзья, наши друзья, музыканты, артисты, поэты, певцы, uh, очень нас много друзей в Украине. Все они сейчас... Friends in Ukraine, musicians, poets, um, writers, actors. actors. They're all fighting. Все, что могут. И мы должны быть тем тылом, который им поможет. And they do everything they can. And we have to be the backup who will look after their backs. Потому что больше им помочь некому. Because there is no one else to help them. Sure. It's quite uh, quite some in fighting you mean actually on the streets with guns or you mean Yes. Yes. He means, you know, I know that yeah, actors from rehearsing on the stage they left and put up put on the uniform uh, to defend defend their country in Ukraine and um, yes that's important we should not be silent and um, and it's stunning to know I did not realize that that you have a high level uh, consultancy uh, advocacy uh, arm like an octopus uh, of the uh, arm of the of the Belarus free theater maybe also a great idea to do one day a documentary play what are you talking about in these you know, in these sessions. And, um, but it's wonderful to know that theater is being taken serious, that voices are listened to. And, but it also, I think, because the Belarus Free Theater uh, created work, you know, people were interested in collated to it, it changed their thinking. So it does show the place of theater in our societies, in our uh, civic uh, engagement. Question for both of you. Who influenced you? Who are your um, your stars? If the heaven of theater is made up of actors, stars, directors, playwrights, who, who are your guiding lights? Who do you learn from? От кого вы учитесь? Кто ваш кто ваш как бы свет, который вам вас вдохновляет? Вопрос для вас обоих. Света, I'm going to let Svetlana start. <laughs> uh, I will say Václav Havel. It's a person who teach me to fight, you know. No matter where you are, just continue to fight. And you guys knew um, him. He was a supporter of your company, right? Yeah. That's a bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if I need to choose one person, I will choose him. And and, and the, yeah, who else? Um, I don't know. For me, hard to answer. Just my friends to inspire me. My family inspire me. Uh, Belarusians who were together on uh, protests very inspire me. And uh, people who now in Ukraine fighting, they are very inspire me, you know. Like everyone who even uh, they have chance to die, they will continue to tell the truth. These people very inspire me. And it can be very like everyone, everyone can be. But not everyone do it. Like, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai. Nikolai. Нам нам посчастливилось общаться и со многими дружить с выдающимися людьми. 
We were lucky enough to be friends and know a lot of truly inspiring people. So Tom Stoppard, Václav Havel, Harald Pinter, uh, Mick Jagger, um, Steven Spielberg, and other and other. И, и это очень многому учило. And uh, each, each individual has taught us a lot. Uh, в первую очередь не мастерству творческому, а в первую очередь манере себя вести и And манере познавать all, мир. Not kind of the theatre arts, not the, the arts in general, but a way of conducting yourself, a way of looking at the world. Все эти люди очень мало говорят и очень много спрашивают. All these people, they don't talk a lot, but they ask a lot of questions. И uh, эти люди общаются со всеми поколениями и чем больше всего с людьми гораздо моложе себя. And all these people, they talk to people of all ages and very often people who are considerably younger than them. И все они социально и политически включены. And they're all socially and politically incredibly engaged. А если говорить о творчестве, то э, сейчас у меня фаза, когда я не, когда я скорее учусь, но учусь в диалоге. And if to talk about art, I would say I'm in a phase when I'm learning, but learning in dialogue. Например, спектакль Burning Doors э, мы создавали, когда мне хотелось про, э, как бы вступить в творческую дискуссию с Яном Фабром. For example, Burning Doors, a show we did and performed in New York, actually, uh, was created in a phase when I wanted to enter a discussion with Jan Faber. Uh, uh, например, спектакль Dog of Europe, Dogs of Europe, uh, там есть для меня элементы дискуссии с Ромео Костелуччо. Or Dogs of Europe, for example, for me, there are elements in it when I'm in discussion with Ромео Костелуччо. Эти дискуссии, они учат гораздо сильнее, чем просто любой мастер-класс. These discussions that you can conduct, they teach much more than any masterclass you can attend. Mm -hmm. Ну, наверное, самые большие уроки я сейчас получаю от того, как, как ведут себя мои соотечественники, как ведут себя uh, украинцы многие. Uh, But the biggest uh, inspiration and lessons I'm getting at the moment are from people in my own country and from Ukrainians who are currently fighting for their freedom. Внутри всего этого есть и предательство, есть и трусость, но есть и безумная отвага и безумность. Within all of it, there is a good level of betrayal and cowardice, but a huge level of bravery and love. Yeah, yeah, and uh, some say, you know, war brings out the very worst of mankind, also the very best of mankind, and people are fighting. Also, that a company like Belarus Free Theater can do their work, show their work, that their artists are respected, that they can, you know, discuss and help our society to look at uh, problems that exist and work through them on a stage, whether it's personal ones in relationships in families or political ones over centuries and millennia theater has done that. And um, it is now uh, no longer possible in countries, you know, like Belarus and also in many parts um, of Russia. And, um, and we will also see how that uh, a big support that the Russian government gave to the uh, Russian directors and their big festivals and Golden Mask, you know, um, how that will turn out and, uh, and what of this is also a real um, resistance. Um, it's uh, incredible uh, to hear you, to have both of you with us. Um, it's feel very honored to share time with you. Maybe as a, a, one of the last, last questions we're coming to end, what did you learn? What is the most important lessons you learned in these 15 years of engaged work, uh, of work there where you were threatened by your lives, uh, where you fought for freedom of speech and artistic expression. What is the most important that you learned? И последний вопрос для вас обоих это что почему вы что главное чему вы научились за эти последние 
годы ваших, вашей работы за все это время, когда вы боролись за свободу? For me now, very uh, important understanding because of running from the house, from the country, with uh, just a backpack, one suitcase. And uh, I understand that all of us, like kind of, you don't need a lot. You need people around you. You need family. You need people who you can hug and who you can be together with. And that's the main now thing for me. Uh, and of course, all these 17 years, like uh, with all this company, we understand doesn't matter will we have any buildings, uh, what kind of money we will have, uh, doesn't matter where we are, the people who are around you, who you, who close to you, who support you. This is the most important, uh, like everything, what you, what I am, what I have, it's people. And uh, Again, doesn't matter where I am now, how many staff I have with me. If there is a people, all good. We can hug each other. Yeah, taking care, taking care of each other is a, a priority. Yeah. yeah. Nikolai. Uh, no. Главное, наверное, чему научила, это что ты не имеешь права сворачивать. То есть ты должен идти, даже несмотря на то, что тебя своим маршрутом, несмотря на то, что тебя хотя, очень хотят с ним столкнуть. И я не только говорю сейчас о насилии, но и, со, но и о соблазнах. Если ты рефлексируешь, если ты развиваешься в профессии и при этом уверен, что идешь правильно, то вот тогда наступает момент, когда ты получаешь свое удовольствие от всего этого. And when you realize that you're continuing on your path, that you're resilient in it, you start really enjoying it. И для этого нужно еще научиться терпению. And for that you also need to learn how to be patient. Потому что очень часто хочется все бросить. Because И very пойти... often you want to give up. И пойти легким путем. And take the path of least resistance. Но... Вряд ли это тебя uh, удержит в ранге личности. But I doubt that will manage to sustain you as a persona, as an хотя individual. Это звучит, хотя это звучит чертовски пафосно. Even though it sounds incredibly full of pathos. Но это правда. There you go. Here we go. Yeah, so this is the truth. And um, and I said, that is also what you, you both uh, on your company said, uh, just to be on the side of truth uh, is a big thing. And, um, and these are important lessons. And I hope that everybody listening, you know, so younger artists, we have many young artists from around the world listen to this. You know, this is a very serious advice. And um, what you guys do is a model we look up to. If theater is of interest, also it is because it is a model for something, for a different society, a different place. It's why people demonstrate because they envision something different. They have hope and that's why they go on the street and theater is, is part of that. And, um, and we spoke today to two you know, of uh, great workers in the field of theater. And uh, we miss Natalia, but the Belarus Freedom Theater will have and already has its place in the history of theater, of global theater over centuries. And you are a shining light, a, a brilliant in that sense of that, you know, more light comes out of you than perhaps even you put in that you have a real uh, 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 symbolic, imaginary, but real influence. And, uh, and uh, we really would like to thank you for all you have done. 
um, for, for Belarus, uh, I think for Ukraine, for your friends, but also for theater in general. It's a, a great role model. It's one of the many ways to do theater. Theater is a, someone said, it's like a museum. It has many, many rooms with many different forms. But what the free Belarus Free Theater created, what they are doing, what they're continuing to do, what they will do, is a brilliant example and a great example of what theater is about. And if anybody asks, does theater have uh, any influence at all? Is it of important? Then you ask uh, people um, like Lukashenko who forbid them, who don't allow them in their tiny little place. They can't even tolerate that. So because it is dangerous, it's subversive. And it's actually not trying to feed the big hungry machine of entertainment. It is actually also working against that machine. And uh, it's a, uh, something that's very radically different than a lot of theater of what we see. Thank you both. And um, thanks for HowlRound uh, for hosting us, Thea, Vijay, Andy, and Tanvi at the Siegel Center. And for you listeners, I know how much is out there. There's this big, big fatigue, a battle fatigue of Corona, now wars. And, uh, but it is important that we hear this because I also feel this is inspiring and what they do, what they say. If you take it to heart, it's also meaningful for your very own life. They are not just talking about art and art, they are talking about us and our lives and that we have to participate and we have to be open and we have to believe in, in what we are, but on this side of truth. So thank you all. And um, I hope to see you both in New York. If you come next January, hopefully we can do a Siegel program, maybe even live in person. Our space is still closed. We have no live events. Um, and we hope that the Corona situation will get better. A terrifying statistic came from Germany yesterday. 59% of all tests uh, were positive. And nobody knows what that means. It's a staggering number. And um, we have to monitor the situation where we are going. And uh, I always wonder if those Russian soldiers who are not vaccinated are a very bad one. No one wears a mask in their tanks together when they shoot on people. You know, it's apocalyptic in the sense of uh, the word. And, um, and but I think we, we uh, have to continue what we are doing. And it was truly inspiring, important, and uh, we are better uh, because of what you said today. We learned a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.